In today's video, I'm sharing 10 life-changing homemaking secrets from Lucy Mon Montgomery's Anne of Green Gables. Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome to The Daily Connoisseur. I have a passion for classic children's literature and in this homemaking series I like to do deep dives into the world's most famous classics and extract the homemaking wisdom from these books. So today we are looking at Lucy Maud Montgomery's classic Anne of Green Gables. This is one of my favorite books. I'm sure it's one of yours too if you're watching this video and I can't wait to share the homemaking wisdom that I took from this book. Life-changing homemaking secret number one is that we should all all strive to be notable homemakers. So right off the bat, page one, chapter one, called Mrs. Rachel Lind is surprised, we get a description of Mrs. Rachel Lind. Now, Mrs. Rachel Lind leaves a lot to be desired. She's not a perfect person and we're not modeling ourselves on her necessarily, but she is a notable homemaker and it says so on the very first page. It says, Mrs. Rachel Lynde was one of those capable creatures who can manage their own concerns and those of other folks into the bargain. She was a notable housewife. Her work was always done and well done. So there are several words here that are interesting. She is capable. She manages. She is notable. Her work is always well done, always finished and well done. Okay, so I think that that is a wonderful description of somebody. Now, obviously she has problems elsewhere. <laughs> She's like the town busybody and she, she it goes on to describe how she likes to look out her kitchen window and doing this, she has created 16 quilts. So obviously there's a lot of other issues there, but we can extract the good from this situation and become notable homemakers ourselves. We can become known for doing things well and always completing them, being capable and managers of our homes. Life-changing homemaking secret number two is that cleanliness is next to godliness, according to Marilla Cuthbert. So on page five in chapter one, we get a description of the Cuthbert's property. And it says, not a stray stick nor stone was to be seen, for Mrs. Rachel would have seen it if there had been, Privately, she was of the opinion that Marilla Cuthbert swept that yard over as often as she swept her house. One could have eaten a meal off the ground without over brimming the proverbial peck of dirt. It goes on to say that the kitchen at Green Gables was a cheerful apartment or would have been cheerful if it had not been so painfully clean as to give it something of the appearance of an unused parlor. Okay, it's so funny because I feel like all the homemaking secrets I get from Anne of Green Gables are a double-edged sword. So on the one hand, Marilla is also known for keeping things painfully clean, so clean that you could eat off her dirt floor and you would not get a speck of dust. So clearly Marilla thinks cleanliness is next to godliness. Cleanliness is so important to her and she runs a tight ship. So she has a great reputation for having a clean home. But at the same time, there is a double-edged sword with this where it's so clean, it appears to be unused. So we can take what we want from it. I think what we can do is be inspired by Marilla's love of a clean home, but not take it as far as she does, where it looks so clean that it looks like nobody even lives there at all. Life-changing homemaking secret number three is that untidy habits cannot be tolerated. On page 29 in chapter seven, Anne says her prayers, Marilla says this, now Anne, I noticed last night that you threw your clothes all about the floor when you took them off. That is a very untidy habit and I can't allow it at all. As soon as you take off any article of clothing, fold it neatly and place it on the chair. I haven't any use at all for little girls who aren't neat. So Anne has just arrived at Green Gables and she's learning how to live there. And Marilla notices an untidy habit from her and immediately nips it in the bud. Now, I think there is something to be said for this with homemaking. And as we guide the ship, as we steer things, and we notice that family members have very untidy habits, rather than grumbling about it and picking it up ourselves, it is better to teach them to not have the untidy habit. I'm talking about our children, basically. If they're in the habit of just throwing their clothes on the floor, that can't be tolerated. And so I love that Marilla goes in there immediately and says, this is not happening, okay? Untidy habits cannot be tolerated. And if everybody has that mindset, then the whole house is going to be a lot neater. Life-changing homemaking secret number four is that work is done first and then 
play. You will notice this theme was in the Little House on the Prairie books that I discussed. And I think this is a very old fashioned theme that really ran through these books. So on page 70 in chapter 12, it says, but remember this in all your planning, Anne, you're not going to play all the time, nor most of it. You'll have your work to do and it'll have to be done first. So again, she's teaching that in their household, they do their work first and then they play. I personally find this to be the most gratifying way to live as well. I can't relax if I know I have a lot of work to do. Now, my trouble is that my work never seems to end and then I never seem to relax. So <laughs> I think that finding a nice balance is key and not just constantly working, but having scheduled breaks as well. Life-changing homemaking secret number five is to always test the food and drink you are going to serve to your guests first. So in chapter 16, Diana is invited to tea with tragic results. Anne is so excited because for the first time, Marilla and Matthew are going to be out of the home and she is allowed to invite Diana Berry, her best friend, her kindred spirit, over for tea. Anne is so excited. She asks if she can use the nice rosebud tea set. Marilla says no to that but she does tell Anne that they can have the raspberry cordial for the occasion. So of course, Anne serves raspberry cordial to Diana when she gets there, and then she goes about doing more business, trying to get the tea ready. Diana has three glasses, and you know the story, she ends up totally drunk. <laughs> and goes home and is sick. Mrs. Barry is furious. Diana is no longer allowed to see Anne. It is a catastrophe and Anne is completely mortified. It turned out that Anne was actually giving her Marilla's current wine rather than the raspberry cordial. So this is really important for us to remember as homemakers when we have people over. It doesn't matter if it's the lunch you prepared or a bottle of wine you're serving. You have to know that it's good, that everything is at the utmost quality, that you're serving what you think you are serving. I'm sure a lot of us have stories where we have served something that wasn't quite right. Maybe the taste was slightly off or an ingredient went awry and that is so embarrassing. So if Anne had tasted the raspberry cordial first, she might have discovered that it wasn't in fact raspberry cordial. Life-changing homemaking secret number six is that sometimes homemaking matters may be put aside if more thrilling matters are present. So in chapter 18 called Anne to the Rescue, Anne had just saved the life of Diana's sister, Minnie Mae. And because of this, Mrs. Berry forgives Anne for getting Diana drunk off the raspberry cordial. And Mrs. Berry wants to invite Anne over to make amends, basically. Anne says, oh Marilla, can I go right now without washing my dishes? I'll wash them when I come back, but I cannot tie myself down to anything so unromantic as dishwashing at this thrilling moment. And of course, Marilla does let her go. So sometimes we have our duties. It is important to know when it's just time to let them go and take care of something a little more thrilling. Life-changing homemaking secret number seven is that table decor matters just as much as the food. So in chapter 21, a new departure in flavorings, Anne is so excited because the minister and his wife are coming to tea at Green Gables. Anne is in charge of the tea, so she gets a second chance here at inviting people over for tea. She says, you'll be using the best tea set, of course, Marilla, she said. Can I fix up the table with ferns and wild roses? I think that's all nonsense, sniffed Marilla. In my opinion, it's the eatables that matter and not flummery decorations. Well, Anne then goes on to convince her because she says that Mrs. Barry had the minister and his wife to tea and her table was complimented. So Marilla cannot be outdone by Mrs. Barry. So she lets Anne do what she will. And Anne decorates the table beautifully. It says, having an abundance of roses and ferns and a very artistic taste of her own, she made the tea table such a thing of beauty that when the minister and his wife sat down to it, they exclaimed in chorus over its loveliness. Life-changing homemaking secret number eight. In homemaking, make sure you label every bottle properly. I think you know where I'm going with this one. So the minister and his wife, Mr. and Mrs. Allen are over for tea. Everything is going well. The table looks gorgeous. Anne got her way and she decorated it with ferns and roses, but something went horribly wrong with the cake. So she served the cake and it was absolutely inedible. And they found out that Anne flavored the cake with anodyne liniment instead of vanilla, but it wasn't Anne's fault. Marilla said, I broke the liniment bottle last week and poured what was left into an old empty vanilla bottle. So Marilla, amazing homemaker though she was, should have relabeled the bottle, obviously, that it was no longer vanilla. You know, I think a lot of us do this. Sometimes a bottle's broken, we pour something in, we think we're the only one who's going to use it. That's not wise. You 
never know who is going to use the bottle. We must always label things properly. Poor Anne. Life-changing homemaking secret number nine is to look on the bright side with your current home decor. So in chapter 29, page 181, an epoch in Anne's life, so Anne and Diana are visiting Miss Josephine Berry, who is Diana's wealthy aunt, and they are staying with her, and her house is positively beautiful. So listen to this description. It says, Miss Berry's house was furnished with a great magnificence, as Anne told Marilla afterwards. Velvet carpet, sighed Anne luxuriously, and silk curtains. I've dreamed of such things, Diana. But do you know, I don't believe I feel very comfortable with them after all. There are so many things in this room and all so splendid that there is no scope for imagination. That is one consolation when you are poor. There are so many more things you can imagine about. Now, I believe that Anne truly did love Miss Barry's decor and that she would have loved it for herself, but she was looking on the bright side. And it's important that we don't fall into coveting what other people have. So let's say you visit a stately home or beautiful house. Maybe you have a friend who has an absolutely gorgeous house. What you don't wanna do is leave their home feeling discontented with what you have. You wanna look on the bright side of what you have and also at the same time appreciate their home decor. So we should never want what other people have, but look at what we have ourselves and look on the bright side. So Anne thought, you know, I, I do like this, the velvet carpet, the silk curtains, but in our home, there's so much more scope for imagination. Life-changing homemaking secret number 10, and this is my favorite, I save the best for last, is that home is a consciousness. So on page 184, driving back from Miss Barry's house, so they just left Aunt Josephine's house, it says, Anne and Diana found the drive home as pleasant as the drive in. Pleasanter indeed, since there was the delightful consciousness of home waiting at the end of it. It's good to be alive and going home, breathed Anne. I've had a splendid time, she concluded happily, and I feel that it marks an epoch in my life, but the best of it all was the coming home. So home is a consciousness. It's not only a physical place, it is a consciousness, and that's why it's so important how we keep our home. Everything from the visual cues, to the smells, to the atmosphere, to the feeling of peace that pervades there from the people who live in the home to the music, I mean everything. Home is not just a physical building, it is a consciousness. She actually refers to home as being a consciousness a second time, and that's why I think this is a very important point. Later in the book on page 213, when she goes away to Queens in chapter 34, Queens Girl, Anne is experiencing homesickness, and it says a horrible choke came into her throat as she thought of her own white room at Green Gables, where she would have the pleasant consciousness of a great green still outdoors, of sweet peas growing in the garden and moonlight falling on the orchard, of the brook below the slope and the spruce boughs tossing in the night wind beyond it, a vast starry sky and the light from Diana's window shining out through the gap in the trees. What a beautiful thought to end the video, that home is a consciousness. And what is the consciousness of your home? What is the consciousness of my home? I want the consciousness to be beautiful, pure, true, and something that my children are always drawn to, even when they're far away. I hope you enjoyed today's video. There's a lot to extract from Anne of Avonlea and the later books, so I will continue this series and share those with you in the future. If you enjoy these videos, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a single one of them. Thank you so much for joining me here on The Daily Connoisseur. Keep calm and remain classy, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye, everyone.